Alright guys, so it's 10 p.m. right now. We got a lot accomplished today. The RO unit is still filling up the tank right now. It looks like we're at about, uh, I'm not going to even say quarter way yet. We're almost at the quarter way mark. What day is it today? Let me make sure. It is December 27, 2019, day one, Leo Pozzo TV, getting back into the hobby, setting up the tank. I'm filling up the tank right now with RO water. I kind of still have to work on my lighting situation right now because I do have some lighting, but it definitely needs to be upgraded. I know I still have some electrical work to do still. I got to finish completing my auto top off here, the gravity fill auto top off. I did prepare some uh, rubble live rock that I'm going to be putting into my sump filtration. I'm calling it live rock, but it's actually dry rock, or should I call it wet rock right now because I just kind of wet it and rinsed it. But it is not live rock because there is no beneficial bacteria on this rubble rock here. So I'm going to show you it. It's small little pieces. The water is going to be flowing through this live rock and it's going to be basically filtering through this rubble live rock through my first chamber and then onto my second chamber which is going to be my skimmer but let me give you a look of the size pieces that I'm going to be using okay so here's the uh, rubble live rock that we have right here it's pretty much like a full bucket it's like a, a pretty much a five gallon bucket completely full of all this little rubble live rock here that looks like it's uh, nice different sizes I even have like a little shell so I put the smaller, super smaller pieces here that I came across. I didn't really pluck through this, but like there's an example, I can put a smaller piece there. I want these smaller pieces towards the bottom, right? So, and then the bigger pieces I can kind of have on top. That's cool with me. So if I wanted to, I can even break this up with a hammer, but I didn't really want to make a mess and put on my glasses and all that good stuff and have to vacuum up or whatever. So I figured I'll just kind of pick through the smaller pieces and put those ones towards the bottom and that's where I'm talking about right there so I'll make one layer there of this smaller kind of stuff right all the way towards the bottom because the water needs to travel through this bottom piece of glass right there and then once I've done like a two inch layer of the smaller stuff from there I'll, I'll put majority of this larger pieces of rubble live rock okay so that's going to be the first chamber both of my drain pipes are going to be draining in over here so i got the wave maker going on there on the right hand side of the tank the tank is filling up nicely the water is pretty cold we got the heater inside there trying to warm it up we have the heater set to uh, 81 degrees Good morning guys, Leo Pozzo TV, thanks very much for tuning in. We're still setting up the 125 gallon tank and today we actually ran into some issues. As I was filling up the tank yesterday with RO water, I wanted to fill up the overflow boxes approximately halfway to kind of test out the, any leaks within the bulkheads or just in general. When the tank is filling up with water, I also like to fill up the overflow box with the same amount of water within the tank because I don't want to create any pressure between the overflow box and and the tank kind of pushing up against it with all that water volume so that's definitely something to consider when you're filling up your tank you want to fill up your overflow box along with your tank at the same level as it fills up okay and as I did that I put some water inside my overflow box here I noticed at the bottom of my tank both of my return lines the return lines coming from my pump are leaking the bulkheads they're stripping down here into the sump and go figure it is so awkward down here underneath the sump filtration and the stand to try to access it let me give you an idea so that's what I'm looking at right there okay I just got to be careful no water drips on the um, on the camera right now but that's more or less what I'm dealing with I'm trying to get into that little area right there that's where the bulkhead is and you can see I have a little hole cut out but it's not easy to access with a pair of channel locks or even with my hand it's not easy so I did cut the pipe and what I'm working on now is I just made this little piece right here so this is what I just finished making right now to tighten up my bulkhead because I do not have a socket that size which is approximately an inch and an eighth for a three-quarter inch bulkhead I do not have a socket that size so I kind of made one out of this PVC pipe so what I did is I got the drill and I got the uh, bulkhead nut here the size of it and I kind of marked it out here at the side you can kind of see I have these uh, markings at the side of the pipe I just marked the corners of the nut 
and then from there I just used my drill and I spent at least a good to be honest with you half an hour trying to get it to the right size but for the most part as you can see it's fitting in there pretty reasonably slightly on an angle right now but I'm gonna hold it nice and square it does fit in there pretty reasonably nice I just kind of made my own socket out of this PVC pipe right here to tighten up this bulkhead so I removed the nut on the bulkhead already right because I said I got to address this issue right I figured I just cut the PVC pipe and now I'm ready to install the bulkhead back in okay so I'm gonna put back in the pipe as it just was I'm gonna get this nut the bulkhead nut along with my new socket that I just made right here that's going to be holding it and I'm going to be able to tighten it up like that okay not too tight you don't want to crack it it is plastic I double checked actually the, the uh, gasket here on the um, bulkhead I made sure that it was nice and clean I took off this gasket here I made sure that it was clean it was facing the right way and I also made sure that there was kind of no debris here in the area of my uh, overflow box where the hole is drilled out you can see that I have some kind of uh, sand and little rocks rubble rocks here towards the bottom of the glass so I, de I poured in a little bit of water to kind of move that off to the side or kind of drain it out through the hole I want to make sure that that area is clean I can't really stick my hand inside here because I got this pipe in the way so I can't really clean it that well so I just kind of flushed it out with some water now I'm kind of ready to tighten it up so I'm gonna place this guy in here okay make sure that it sits down nice and easy okay so that is good that looks pretty good to me so now I need to come here down towards the bottom and use my little device here so first I'm just gonna try to tighten it up by hand you can see how kind of awkward it is let me see if I can get my hand in here oh. it's hard to get Marco I know dad I'm gonna get it you okay. help? yeah I'm slightly getting it right now I'm just slowly turning it by hand nice okay so I snug that up by hand I'm gonna make sure that it's uh, sitting nicely up here at the top okay so that looks pretty good right there all right so now I'm gonna get my little piece of pipe my little invention here my little socket I made I'll try to put it on this try to give you guys a, a, a decent view somehow so I got these pipes in the way I gotta actually remove this. This is the pipe I took I cut off. So I need to remove this. Hey, that was a close one, bro. Eventually. Uh this is super awkward, man. Oh, hold on. 20 minutes later. So I just tightened that up right there. The tool actually worked pretty good. You just gotta make sure that you apply pressure. You push up as you're turning, but I find using a socket is the best. All right guys, so now I'm gonna be taking off this bulkhead right here. I gotta cut this pipe. I got a little handsaw right here, and I'm going to just simply tighten up this bulkhead a little bit better. I tried here with my channel locks to adjust it, but it just seems like I don't have enough room, and I'm not a fan of uh, tightening up bulkheads with channel locks, especially on the angle that I'm going to be trying to tighten them on because it's only going to grab the nut from two sides and from my experience you end up just cracking the bulkhead anyways ideally it would have been nice if I can just fit my sawzall in here or would have cut it like this but I got to use an old school little hand saw right now so the other bulkhead on the other side of the tank I did pour some water in it to test it out and there is no water leaking from the underside of it so that side's good to go so now I'm going to be working on the right hand side here I'm going to simply do the same thing I'm just going to cut off the pipe there below the bulkhead enough that's going to allow me to connect a coupling afterwards and from there I'm just going to tighten it up with my socket as I mentioned and uh, I'm back to connecting the rest of the plumbing back together okay so let's go ahead and do that right now get my handsaw one hour later Hey, didn't say this was gonna be easy. I'm sweating up a bit here. So I just noticed that there's a little bit of glue on the other side of that pipe there. So it might affect my coupling that I'm going to be gluing on there. So I'm just going to kind of clean off the glue slightly with maybe a little knife. 
just kind of uh, clean up the area there, make sure there's no old glue where I plan to be installing glue and a PVC pipe. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up. Got my little pipe, got my little socket here. A few moments later. Okay, that seemed pretty tight. I did definitely tighten it up better than what it was. I'm gonna add some water in the overflow box and see, and we'll observe it from down here. So there's actually some water already inside the overflow box. So if it's not leaking now, it's not gonna leak. I definitely snugged it up quite a bit. This little PVC socket here that I made works pretty well. Let me give it one final crank. Okay, I think that's it. All right, cool, this part's done. Now we can connect the rest of our plumbing and go from there. Okay guys, so I just got back from the hardware store. I went to go pick up some metal strapping as I want to support some of the uh, plumbing right here, the PVC plumbing. I'm gonna put a strap right here and I'm gonna loosen off the one I have here in the middle because it's not exactly lining up where I need it to land now that I've changed a little bit of the plumbing. So I'm gonna loosen up this one right here uh, once I've loosened up that and I have this supported, I'll be able to tilt the plumbing here onto the one hand side and then from there I'm going to glue on my PVC coupling right here. This is a 3 quarter inch PVC coupling and I'm going to connect the plumbing onto this side. Once I have it connected here and supported over here, I'm gonna go ahead and install a middle brace in the middle of the pipe as well. So on the right hand side of my tank for the return pump, as you saw, we did cut it off there as well and we did tighten up the bulkhead. I'm going to install a coupling, a three quarter inch coupling, and then I'm gonna install this union ball valve right here, which is going to allow me to control the flow of the water coming from my return pump onto the right hand side. And I also have a valve for the one on my left hand side right here. So I will be able to control the flow of both of the return pumps via both of these union ball valves. And the fact that I'm gonna have these union ball valves here, this allows me to simply unscrew this and then take it apart. And for an example, this side would be connected to my pump. I can go ahead and service my pump, replace my pump, maintain my pump, clean it out, whatever I need to do. And then I can simply connect it back with these union ball valves. So I really highly suggest these union ball valves when it comes down to plumbing. If you're not gonna be using a valve, if a valve is not needed, you can simply just use a union. And a union is the same idea, just excluding the valve. You will not have a valve and it's just two pieces of plumbing that will simply screw together and will allow you to take apart the plumbing conveniently. Let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to install the strap right here. I have my snips, so let's go ahead and open up this packaging. I don't need very much, let's just say a couple of inches. I'll cut off whatever access I don't need. I got a couple of drywall screws. I got my uh, Phillips screwdriver. So I'm just gonna simply install this here where I want it to be installed. guys so I'm back here onto the right side of the tank I'm ready to install this coupling along with this valve underneath here on the return line so I have my PVC glue all ready to go uh, let me know what you, uh, I'm curious to know what you guys use do you guys use like a PVC primer have you guys been using just the glue like me or have you guys been using the primer curious to know many people have uh, different opinions on that so I've installed this end, now I'll install up at the top. You definitely don't want to get any of this in your eyes. So when you're working with something like this, it might be a good idea to put some gloves on. Perfect, so that's good to go. So it looks like the plumbing is all done for the most part. You can see I installed the brace on this side over here onto this plumbing coming from this return pump, the submergible pump. It comes along here with the valve. We got this valve here that we can control it with and then it goes up over there, up towards the bottom of the tank, okay? And then there we have the two drains. I still undecided, am I going to install a refugium here? I used to have a refugium here off to the side this drain was teed off here and I can control 
to drop water into the refugium and then from the refugium it would just drop back inside the sump but it was such a small little like 5-10 gallon tank I don't really think it's that efficient if I really gonna do a refugium on this system I need something a little bit bigger so I may do something like that in the future with like a rubber made container or some kind of uh, simple you know larger reservoir tank or whatnot so I think right now for refugium we'll just use this uh, this just chamber right here but we're still a long way from that so one thing at a time the tank process it looks like it is officially the halfway mark so that's good news halfway of filling the tank we still got to uh, fill up these overflow boxes now so this is exactly what I was saying I do not want to leave these overflow boxes empty with all the water surrounding it you might actually cave in this overflow box so we want to start actually putting some water in the overflow box and match the same line in the tank so we'll be doing that with both of these I'm going to actually do that right now Okay, you can see that the overflow box now has some water in it. It's approximately about three quarter way full and as well as this one onto the right hand side. This is the water level in the tank and then this is the water level in the overflow box, guys. I just don't want to create any kind of pressure between the tank water and the overflow box. I like to fill them up consistently, nice and evenly together. So we address those leaks. We cut off the plumbing, a new coupling, and we've also tightened up the bulkhead nut. We did that on both sides as well as this side over here so both sides are now complete we're pretty much ready for the water just to continue to fill up and then fill up the sump and then we're ready to turn on our two return pumps we have an external and a submergible I cranked up the heater inside the tank because we keep on constantly giving the tank cold water from the RO unit so I just kind of turned up the heater all the way to max and then from there once the tank is full we'll turn it down to the appropriate setting when you thought it can only get better it actually gets worse what happened now is when I filled the overflow box as I just showed you guys the one on my right hand side here now guess what 